everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Good afternoon, my name is Wendy Laidlaw from Heal Endometriosis Naturally. Um, I'd like to thank Suzanne for being with me today. She's agreed to be interviewed about her experience um, with Heal Endometriosis Naturally book and the 12-week foundation program. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you very much. Great to have you here. I think lovely and healthy today, all the way in Sweden there. Um, so yes, yeah, so thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed. Um, it's always such a joy to have a chat with women who have um, obviously experienced the book and experienced the program and I just wonder if you know this is where I can ask you some questions about your experience so maybe you could just tell people a little bit about your background as to how you first heard about me about the book and then a bit more about the 12-week foundation program uh, okay um, it's so much so it's it's uh, difficult to know where to start but um, my background is that 14 years ago, I had the first um, flare of endometriosis. Um, and actually, I was lucky enough to get diagnosed uh, quite soon. Um, I only had it for a couple of months before I got my diagnosis, And um, that was through, um, is it called lap? Lap what is the operation called? Yeah. La laparoscopy, yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's a big word. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, then they took away uh, three cysts. Uh, that's what they could see. Yeah. And um, after that, they wanted to put me on um, a medicine to get me um, into the menopause. Uh, um, and I did some uh, reading about it and um, I was uh, working with health, um, actually some alternative therapies and the side effects of the drug they wanted to give me, I can't remember its name, um, but um, it was uh, horrible, I thought. And uh, back then, there was not so much uh, um, information on the internet, but there were a few um, um, what do you call it? Um, um, not blogs, but um, uh, I'm losing the name. It was a uh, group of people uh, having endometriosis uh, they were connected and um, you could only see the bad things how horrific everything was um, when they got this medi medication they got better from the endometriosis but they got a horrific side effects so they couldn't go to work anyway and i thought that's not my way I'm not going to do it that way um, so I went to a couple of different um, alternative um, therapists and um, um, they led me into thinking about if it had something to do with my uh, stomach and uh, I usually had a bloated stomach I was uh, um, sensitive for different kind of foods I knew that and um, when I asked the doctors to see if there was a connection between my uh, intestines the flora in my intestines 
with bacteria and the endometriosis, they said, uh, well, that's, uh, that's too, um, costs too much money. We can't do that. Uh, you need to get me uh, scientific studies that there is a connection before we can do that kind of research on you. And um, then I thought, well, I, I need to do this my own way. And uh, through a hair analysis, I got to know that I had uh, too much manganese in my body. It was actually 80 times as much as you're supposed to have. Wow. And um, we found that it was from uh, our water. Uh, there's a filter, uh, but it needed to be adjusted to get the manganese. Uh, so a nutritionist helped me with uh, detoxing my body. Yeah. Uh, I was practicing uh, yoga. Uh, to be able to stand the, the pain. Yeah. Uh, and that actually helped me get well. So um, now, after uh, having uh, got more and more knowledge about Eastern dominance and um, everything around, uh, I I think that that it was not just the water that was the problem, but um, uh, the way I treated my body uh, helped me uh, out of of the condition. So uh, I've had thirteen very good years after that. I've had two kids. Um, I did have three miscarriages in between the kids, uh, but um, two healthy kids. And um, I thought that endometriosis, endometriosis, although the doctor says that it's a chronic disease, yeah. I thought that that's not in my life anymore. Yeah. I was though worried that my daughter might get it. So um, I started to do some reading. Uh, last autumn um, so that I could be have more lot knowledge about it and uh, the scary part is that my endometriosis actually flared up again after uh, not having uh, felt those specific uh, feelings of pain yeah. that endometriosis gives me and um, so I thought well I've been well once uh, I just need to do the same things again and I will uh, get better again uh, but it, it didn't come that quickly and um, I was a bit distressed I thought, what, what is wrong? And I didn't know what triggered uh, the endometriosis this time. Yeah. Um, and so I was searching the internet and I found uh, your page and uh, uh, your really nice offer to get the book for free. So I sent for it. I started reading it and um, uh, this time I was worrying that I might not get rid of the endometriosis if I don't uh, go in and do a, a surgery to take yeah. away the cysts. Um, but when I read about serapeptase and um, your experience with that, I thought that, uh, great, uh, that gives me hope again. Yeah. And... Um, Last time, I, I went on a very strict diet. I didn't have any um, flour, uh, um, not wheat, not, uh, um, well, not any grains at all. And um, this time, when I read more about your um, experiences with wheat and 
gluten, it was uh, actually easier than the last time. <laughs> um, so I went back to a quite strict um, a diet um, and um, uh, what else did I do? Um, well, I, uh, yes, I started to do some some journaling uh, just from reading your book, uh, not at all uh, the three pages as, as you uh, encourage us to do now. But uh, I started to write pain scores and uh, what my activities were uh, and what the outcome was. Yeah. Um, and um, then uh, I thought, no, uh, it would be really nice to get a support uh, to, to get help to work it through. So that's why I entered the 12 week foundation program. Yeah, fantastic. And so when you uh, apply for the foundation program, I think you said that you were, uh, you, know, you, just, you were just trying to pick up from where you'd left off the last time you had tried to sort of manage it through diet and the serpetes. So what in particular, when you're saying you wanted support, what did you feel that you needed support in? What, what was, because obviously you've been very successful before, but you felt something had changed this time and you, you weren't able to identify the trigger or what had caused it to flare up but what in particular made you sort of reach out for support through the foundation program well i knew that uh, there was something that i missed um, so i needed to have a detective uh, to help me go through everything yeah. um, i had uh, when my new flare up it was in september uh, 2017 and um, uh, when it was at worst in December, January, February, um, my, I was bedridden for uh, eight days uh, after my period and uh, with pain scores uh, from two to six. So it wasn't as bad as uh, 14 years ago. Uh, and I was bedridden for two years, uh, two, no, two weeks every month. And the uh, pain scores uh, up to 10 sometimes. Um, uh, and I didn't, I, I, that was a, such a depressing time. Um, I had a really difficult time before I made it all turn and I knew I don't want to go there this time. Yeah. And when I started the program, I was down at a pain score from zero to two. Uh, so I was quite good, but uh, I wasn't uh, satisfied. I knew that um, life can be better. I do want to may be able to plan uh, what to do um, because that that is so sad not being able to plan anything, uh, not being able to promise the kids to go there, to take them there, uh, to be with them um, because you might need to stay in the sofa all day. So I thought, uh, well, I need, uh, I need the support, uh, a detective to know what is causing it this time. Yeah. And um, I am really happy that I did join because uh, during this time, during the 12 weeks, uh, I was still making progress. Uh, in the beginning, it was uh, in the beginning of the program. It was more repetition uh, of what I had done before, um, and of course, you have written it all in the book. Uh, but you always get new things. Uh, you see thing, 
things from a different uh, perspective. And um, it was um, it was very good, and I felt better and stronger. Uh, but uh, I think it was four weeks in to the program uh, that my mother got very ill, uh, and uh, we needed to uh, uh, go in and out to the emergency with her, uh, and it was. Uh, very stressful not being able to help her um, she was in a state that uh, she she couldn't um, take in what we are we were telling her and uh, that situation would probably have caused me um, to go backwards uh, into the a more difficult stage of the endometriosis because of all the stress and because of uh, because um, you don't well I shouldn't say you don't but I knew I know myself and um, if somebody needs my help I go there and help them and I uh, skip the things that are important for me for a while but in this stage, I needed to uh, to do certain things for myself, and you uh, you helped me. Um, you helped me stay there to do the basic things, and to actually coach me uh, through this difficult time with my mother. And that's something that I never would have expected. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I get a bit emotional now. But uh, it was uh, so good having you to talk to and um, to support me in, um, well, uh, I needed to take some some more digestive enzymes in that period and that's something that I wouldn't have been thinking about myself yeah. so it was great um, and actually now my mother is much better and uh, uh, her situation has uh, stabilized and um, I think that uh, the both things, her illness and and your program has helped me. It, it was actually very good timing. It has helped me to get more in contact with my emotions and to get much deeper into the relationship with my whole family, actually. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I know. And I know that was very important to you because it was it was such a shame that you just started the program and then this had happened. But equally, I you know it was great that you were you you were open to to the support about keeping. I refer to it as the oxygen mask scenario, where if you don't put your own oxygen mask and don't look after yourself, then you can't help other people. You then become very very ill. But a lot of women with endometriosis are fantastic caregivers very sensitive and perceptive and aware of other people and whilst that is a lovely quality sometimes and i know i was guilty of it too of doing it to excesses where i had nothing left to give but i kept giving out to other people and i think the um and, and, uh, certainly one aspect of the program is remembering you have to look after yourself so therefore you can help other people and with your mother being so ill and you're right normally in these situations and you forget to eat and you forget to look after yourself and it's just remembering to keep to the basics and i you know full credit to you um you kept turning up on our calls and you kept turning to the, the group calls and you you kept going because i do believe that life throws you obstacles in the way sometimes on this new journey when you're trying to heal yourself and it can be very very frustrating so what about you talked about developing your relationship with your emotions and i know and I'll share this for people who are listening, 
you found it quite difficult to cry before, didn't you? You were saying that to show your emotions in that way felt felt challenging for you. And now you feel a bit more comfortable with yourself to show your emotions. So thank you for being so vulnerable on, on this uh, interview with us. But maybe you want to share a bit more about your relationship with your emotions. Uh, oh, well, it's, it's not easy to say words on it. But um, the journaling uh, has helped me a lot to sort out my feelings and to structure my feelings and to, uh, to prioritize uh, what to do next. Because in that situation where we were, it's such a chaos. And nothing really works as um, usually all the routines uh, disappear and um, the journaling uh, and doing it in the morning it was so good and uh, i know that you say in the beginning of the program that most people think that that's the most difficult thing to do Yes, and uh, I thought it was difficult as well, even though I started before, but then it was just uh, uh, some tiny notes. Um, then after a while I did it in the evening. Uh, uh, you told me the importance of doing it in the morning. I started doing it in the morning after my yoga session, which is uh, something that I wouldn't let go now. Uh, it helps me so much. Uh, but now I actually do it before my yoga. So <laughs> I, I do it uh, right after waking up and I have, uh, I'm surprised that I, I do uh, remember so many dreams. Uh, I think that um, it's almost impossible that I have dreamt as much as I do now uh, earlier. But probably, and, and I know now that if I do something else uh, uh, before my journaling, uh, if I go around, do things for 10 minutes, the dreams disappear. I don't remember them anymore. Yeah. Uh, but right after you wake up, uh, they're still in your head and it's, uh, very interesting to most of them are uh, strange and they don't make sense at all but now I've been uh, going back look through my journaling and uh, I see that it's almost scary because I saw things in my dreams that has actually developed to be true yeah. um, you don't it doesn't make sense when you write it, but after a while, uh, you see that, wow, uh, I could see that coming. Yeah. And um, uh, many times I, I've been thinking about, well, am I doing this right, uh, the journaling? Uh, but you've said that there is no right and wrong. Uh, just try not to be judgmental and I've had that in my mind uh, and um, well um, many of my emotions they have um, as soon as I uh, get the courage to write them down they are not scary anymore uh, as soon as I write them I can work through them, uh, see if there's something I need to do, somebody I need to contact, um, next step with somebody in a relationship, uh, or if it's somebody, uh, something I just can let go. And quite often it is, uh, it is uh, something that I don't need to carry around. I can just let it go. And uh, it gives me uh, 
sense of being much stronger, wiser, um, calmer. And uh, by that, I, it's been easier to talk to friends and relatives um, uh, about emotions. Um, when we talk, it it doesn't just uh, it's not just about uh, daily things. Uh, we tend to talk about more emotional things, and and sometimes. Uh, I cry, sometimes my friend cry, sometimes we both cry, uh, but it's just uh, nice, it's not any hysterical crying, uh, just uh, tears falling, um, feelings that are released, and um, it feels so good. Yeah, that's fantastic, and and I should share that obviously, um, as, you, as you mentioned, um, I mean the journaling is one part of the three daily basics of the foundation program and there are other layers of changes that we we make throughout the program but the journaling was a challenge for you at the beginning and it is a challenge for everybody because normally when you've got endometriosis and you're in chronic pain and you're just literally just getting through your life to actually take the time to journaling feels counterintuitive but what i'm what the the purpose is and i'm glad to hear it's it's the same for you is that you're getting in touch with your emotions they're not big and they're not scary. And you're learning to make the connection between what is happening in your emotions and how that manifests or how that resides in your body. And how would you say the program, the 12 Week Foundation Program has helped you with regards to the relationship with your body? Um, I don't know. Uh... That was a difficult question. question. <laughs> in in relationship, um, so, so yeah, I mean, are are you? Do you think through the journaling and through the education and the webinars that you maybe feel a bit more confident um, about your body? If there are any signs and symptoms in in any aspect, you now have a better relationship with your body. Would you feel as well as your emotions? Uh, well, uh, as I um, bodies are very much in my interest, I uh, trust bodies bodies to heal themselves. I've yeah. always had that uh, in mind, um, but it's always more difficult when it happens to yourself and you don't see the whole picture it's easier to just stay in one corner and um, it's very easy to to become a victim uh, and it's also difficult when it's uh, a close friend or relative that is um, sick or ill or hurt in any way uh, it's so much easier to see what other people could do to uh, get better uh, but um, uh, well as I said I've, I've always had that uh, with me since I was a kid that the body is uh, amazing at healing itself uh, and now it was so good to have you as a as a coach to help me uh, with this uh, wider perspective to have a look at my body um, and I think that's it, it, the multimodal approach to the program that that was very important to me because I was unaware of how your emotions would affect your hormones and how symptoms and signs in your body could there be different types of signs and symptoms that were giving out different messages different emotions were giving out different messages in relating to the body and I think that's what I hear from you and I hear a lot of the women in the program is they develop this confidence, not only within their own instincts, their own emotions are more comfortable with their emotions, recognizing their emotions are messengers, they're telling them things, and then also being able to tune into their body in a slightly different way than they've done before because the body before was invariably screaming out to them in pain when something was wrong 
but any pain and any symptoms are signs and messengers that there's something there that needs attention. And that's, as you said earlier in the beginning, that's where you and I work together as detectives to try and fine tune different things. But I think what's been lovely in your particular experience of the foundation program is, as you said, you really understood the body is an amazing thing, which is probably going to be hard for some women to hear if they're writhing around in pain in, in bed with endometriosis. They may not feel that loving towards their body right now. But when they learn what's causing the pain, because there's always a cause, you know, it's cause and effect. If we identify what the causes are and remove that, then as you said, the body is an amazing thing and will, will heal itself. But what I've heard from you is that you really appreciate the emotional component, which is not something that tends to get talked about a lot, you know, and, and, and dealing with that and then becoming more comfortable with your emotions and things. So if you, if anyone was listening and considering uh, joining the foundation program, what, um, what would you be saying to them? What, what, are, what are the key aspects apart from the journaling and the power shakes and things? What, what for you has been the most uh, significant or important aspect that you, you would take away from the foundation program? Uh, well, I was thinking about joining for a long time as I knew or, and had this belief about the body and I knew that I had been um, healing myself before, I thought I can do this on my own again. Yeah. Um, but after a while, I thought, no, I don't have time to do this. And when you're in pain, uh, you're tra tired. And um, I thought... It, I got some kind of uh, dizziness, so it was uh, difficult to do a lot of reading and studying on my own. Yeah. And in the beginning, it felt it felt a little bit like I was giving up uh, by joining. But as soon as I had joined the program, I thought, "Oh shit! Why didn't I do this earlier?" Uh, <laughs> because it's such a relief uh, to have somebody to talk to with the experience of uh, healing endometriosis uh, yourself and um, uh, well you were talking about the emotions uh, I had done everything I thought possible uh, with uh, products and uh, and physical stuff, but I didn't have a clue about uh, the emotions. Uh, I did I did a lot of um, relaxation um, training and mental training uh, because I know uh, that uh, mental training has helped me very much before, both in uh, sports uh, situations, but in uh, in daily life. Uh, but this is another way of uh, uh, looking at the emotions. Yeah. And um, well, one of the first things actually, I think it happened the first week was that you advised me to um, include my family. And I thought that uh, now uh, I don't want to drag them down into this um, uh, boring uh, and uh, well, I can't really find the words for it, but uh, this black hole that endometriosis is for me. Uh, I did everything to provide for them to have a good time. I just um, put myself in the sofa and I um, said, yes, you go out and do this. And my husband and my kids, they went out to see friends and do fun things. Uh, while I was in the sofa yeah. uh, and I didn't really inform the kids about what was going on and yeah. 
the first week, I realized that I'm so stupid. Of course, of course, they want to know what's wrong with me. And as soon as I did that, it, that was the first relief, actually. And I get emotional again. But I've got a six-year-old and an 11-year-old. And uh, this six-year-old, he, uh, he, he was listening, but he thought, oh, can we do something else now? Uh, when I was trying to tell them uh, about the disease, uh, what I was doing, and uh, that I was get, getting help through this uh, foundation program. But um, uh, anyway, after that little uh, family session, uh, it was uh, so much easier. Um, and that was the first stage of my emotional trip, actually, to let them in and to uh, um, well, the idea of not carrying the burden all by yourself. Yeah. Um, it's not a sign of being strong, trying to fix everything yourself no. I've, I have learned that it's uh, more courageous and you're stronger if you if you can ask for help and if you're willing to take help yeah yeah and I think you've done so brilliantly in that regard because I know that that was very difficult for you at the beginning and again, that's very common with women with endometriosis. I know I was the same. It felt like a sign of weakness to ask for help. I felt like a burden. I felt like a drain. I felt um, I didn't feel very good about myself either when I was in chronic stages of pain and lying around in bed. Um, but I think when you have the support to be able to say and explain, it does take more courage to, to share with your family. This is the situation this is what I need from you and would you help support me through this program because I want to get myself well I want to live my life again and sometimes you know it's even just getting support in the language and how to approach it you know how to deal with them because sometimes you're just getting through the day dealing with the pain without trying to think about how you might communicate that but I agree it is definitely takes more courage to share you know what's going on and that's why in the first week of the program I encourage you all to sit down with your families and let them watch the video of the laparoscopy and suddenly they've got a whole new perspective on the laparoscopy operation and what's going on in your insides and that's again just part of building your confidence you know building up um, your voice and and helping you share your emotions so if anyone was um, considering joining the program what would you say to them uh, what would be your your parting words um, to say to people if they were if they're maybe struggling on their own at the moment they're maybe following my book um, it's maybe taking them longer than they'd like what what would you uh, how would you what would you say about the foundation program uh, well I would say uh, don't hesitate I really recommend it um, it gives you so much more than you would ever think and it's it's the best support to really get going because there are always things uh, in your life that turns up and um, and then it's so easy to uh, get your uh, actions for endometriosis uh, on hold uh, and um, that's dangerous to do that uh, but the program is um, the best way to really uh, keep fighting. And um, the 12 weeks, they passed quite fast. Uh, and it's difficult to really see uh, the difference all the time. And although I 
I um, adjusted the basic uh, things in the program for five weeks and then I had a lot to catch up. Um, it was um, so interesting to now in the end to uh, look back in the journaling, uh, see how, what I've done, uh, how I felt and to reflect on uh, how I have um, um, changed and, and um, it's not only the pain score uh, of the endometriosis that has uh, decreased, uh, there are so many more things that has happened. Um, and um, the things that I wrote in the beginning of the program, what I would do when I felt pain-free, um, I've already started to do. Uh, I'm, I'm, I Yay. check them. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, by then it felt like a dream. And uh, a dream that might be impossible, even though I... I did have this uh, feeling about um, natural healing that it would work, but um, it was still a dream that I didn't know if it would come true ever. Yeah. And um, now they have come true, many parts of it. And it's, it feels like I have more, I'm uh, the boss of my life now. Uh, and I think that um, one reason that my endometriosis flared up again was that I had lost contact with myself, um, both by uh, caring more for the kids than for myself, yeah. and I had a job that um, was quite demanding, a, a lot of traveling, and uh, I had a bad uh, conscious of leaving the kids so much. So when I was home, I just spent time with them. And there was never a time for me, for myself. And uh, in this program, uh, you really need to look after yourself. Uh, what do I need? Uh, and um, get in touch with yourself. Yeah. Uh, now it feels so, uh, well, it, I can't find the word for it, but it's um, so natural. Uh, it's uh, not strange at all. It's uh, just as it's supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, and instead of just running around in circles, uh, doing what other people want me to do, uh, I now, uh, I'm the boss in my life. And uh, I didn't think that would be an outcome of this program. Yeah. I was just looking forward to a, um, a pain-free life. Uh, and now it feels like uh, that is uh, a small thing. Uh, that is the greatest thing when you are in pain. Uh, but now I even get more. So that's something to look forward to if you're planning to join the program. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And I think that's it. I think once you can, uh, I, I remember feeling I had this great desire to get well when I was bedridden, but didn't know how to do it. So I, 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 that's what I put everything that I learned into my book. And then by putting it into the program, then people just have to plug in to the various steps that I've taken and learn from what I learned and not have to, to struggle to find out these things themselves. And, and as you said, there's normally a number of different elements that we need to look at at any one given time. And it's hard to do that when you're on your own. And then also we, we do have the, the group Q and A's every two weeks as well. How have you found that coming together with other women that are going through the program? Uh, that is very good. Uh, you get a perspective um, and um... Uh, they uh, take up things uh, that I haven't thought about. 
uh, that turns out to be important for me as well. Uh, and uh, it's very important not to feel alone. And even though I've just listened to them during this uh, group calls, um, it feels like uh, we're a team, we're fighting together. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, so great to hear that they're getting better as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think that's really important is a woman with endometriosis and I know I felt exactly the same. I felt so alone terribly alone and I made a vow I made it my mission once I got well that I would write what worked for me and make sure that there was enough support in place for women so that they felt part of a group and a community that was not just talking about the pain or the, or the symptoms or surgery but actually talking about getting well and healthy and and getting their life and their body back because it can be so disheartening when you've got a flare up or when you know, you're bedridden again and you don't know why. But as you say, when you're going through the program yourself, you're, and that's why it's 12 weeks, because it does take time to start to see the changes. We're planting seeds along the way whilst removing and swapping out any offending products or people or foods or anything, you know, depending on what's, what's you know, the, the issue for you. But having the support and hearing other people, um, again, it just makes you feel you know, you're part of something and not alone. And that, that's a big thing. But look, thank you so much for taking the time out to chat to me today. I would say if anyone is interested in getting more information on the foundation program, it is over a 12 week, it's an online membership program with 12 one-on-one -on -one appointments with me, um, group calls, handouts, downloads, Facebook group, um, you get all the support that you need, please go to heal endometriosis naturally course.com or go on to heal endometriosis naturally.com and um, you can click on details there of how, how to join up. Equally, if you anybody would like to get a free paperback copy of my book, which lays out my story and a step by step guide of what worked for me, I just ask you to pay the shipping and handling then go on to heal endometriosis naturally book.com and you can order your free copy there. But Suzanne, thank you so much for taking the time out. I know there'll be so many women get so much encouragement and hope um, from hearing your story. Um, and full credit to you, you've had a lot of ch challenges thrown your way throughout the program, but you stuck with it. You kept going, you didn't give up. And I'm so pleased that you've seen the benefits from the program that you have. Thanks. And I want to encourage those with endometriosis that never give up because uh, it is true, the body is going to heal itself uh, yeah. if you give them the opportunity. And yeah. it's so great to get the life back again. Yeah. So go for it. <laughs> well, thank you so very much, Suzanne. Take care, we'll speak soon. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.